Did you know that Joseph Franklin Rutherford was married up to his death in 1942? The entire time he acted as the faithful slave. Her name was Mary. Mary had bad health and needed to live in a warmer climate. When Rutherford went for the presidency in 1917, he left Mary and their son Malcolm in California to live in New York. Not very loving of him or a very good example of what a husband should do, was it? In a 1930 Golden Age article, a question was asked. Will husband and wife live together after the resurrection is completed, if both are in harmony with God? Well, the answer was very telling. The answer that was given, the scriptures do not reveal what the relationship of men and women will be after the resurrection is completed. It goes on to say, whether the identity of the sexes as such will be preserved, we do not know. There have been well-authenticated instances in which women have been transformed into men, and it is possible that this transformation may become general, and we should all be brothers together. Now, though Rutherford may not have penned this answer himself, the fact that it found its way into print under his presidency was telling. Witnesses today would certainly be astonished at the suggestion that a forerunner of the Awake magazine seriously suggested that women might need to have their gender changed in order to take their place in God's new world. A year later, Judge Rutherford would release the first volume of his Vindication book series. The first of these books published in 1931 we see a bizarre rant against women in which Rutherford's misogyny was fully unleashed. In a section headed Women to the Fore, the judge bemoaned the enfranchising of women in Christendom. Rutherford went so far as to link the empowerment of women with involvement from Satan following the devil's recent ousting from heaven. In Rutherford's mind, it was unthinkable for a woman to have any role of responsibility, either in religion, in the congregation, or in politics. To allow women any influence in these areas was to invite God's wrath, and Judge Rutherford felt it was his duty to warn against such depravity. Women, in his view, were to be put in their proper place, and the failure of anyone else to notice this was not due to enlightened progressive thinking, it was plain cowardice. Rutherford felt somehow threatened by women having a powerful influence over the men. When it came to his influence over the Bible student community, women would have stick to their proper place. It was simply an abomination for their voices to be heard and given an equal weight to those of their male counterparts. But he wasn't done. Rutherford went on to say that an act of chivalry by men was being tantamount to worshiping women. If you were affiliated with the organization in 1931 when the Bible students became Jehovah's Witnesses, you were required to believe that the simple act of rising from the table when a woman approached or removing your hat when a woman entered the elevator represented a subtle scheme of Satan aimed at contorting the proper position of man and women. Rutherford believed that Mother's Day was an elaborate conspiracy by the devil to deflect special honor and worship away from God and toward women. The judge was convinced that one of Satan's first orders of business on being ousted from heaven in 1914 was to influence world leaders to inaugurate the celebration of motherhood on a special day. So we have Rutherford to thank for not celebrating Mother's Day. It was Judge Rutherford and his 1931 condemnation against the satanic plot respecting women that you can credit. Judge Rutherford's idea of any good and faithful service by women basically involved their willingness to place and promote his writings and recorded messages at every opportunity. 
In his book, The Four Presidents of the Watchtower Society, Edmund Gruss relates how Judge Rutherford often said in his public talks that women were only a stack of bones and a hank of hair. Now, I know this is true because my husband's grandmother was at an assembly where he said this, and she wasn't very happy about it. As you can see, the self-proclaimed judge had a very low opinion of women. Now, this was a complete change from Charles Russell, whose wife, Moriah, was used as director, treasurer, assistant editor, secretary, and co-writer of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania. So, yes, Joseph Franklin Rutherford, the second president and second faithful slave of the organization, was definitely misogynistic. That misogyny can be seen within the organization today. Women are not treated equally with responsibilities. As a woman, you cannot have any responsibilities within the congregation apart from cleaning and preaching, can we? If you look at any organizational pictures depicting the 144,000, there are never any women depicted. It's always men, always white men. Coming up, we're going to see Judge Rutherford's view on Jews. Was he racist towards them? Well, come back to find out. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like algorithms. And if you're really enjoying it, please subscribe so that you can get notified of any new videos. And as always, thank you for watching.